pleasure to be with all of you this morning. So we look at this feast that we're celebrating today here at the School of the Three Hierarchs. And there are many wonderful things said about them, but there are many important things that we have to examine about them that has been timeless. And you would think that what our Lord says in this gospel is almost first said to them, that you are the light of the world. And what happened with these three men? They came, they suffered, they went through many difficulties, but they were beacons of light. They were lights to the world. And many of the hymns will refer to them. There's many wonderful words that they're that said about them, that they're lampstands, they're lights. Rudders of the faith is one of the terms used to address them. That the rudder of a faith, the rudder, which guides and directs and keeps it on a straight path. Because God provides for his people in so many different ways that a lot of times we don't see. But it's there. God provides for us and nourishes us, sends us light. He is light. And sends us individuals who accept his call and become light in the darkness of the world. And that darkness, we mean lies, deceit, heresy, manipulations, war, strife, famine, distress. And not only is the Holy Spirit present when we call upon it and there to heal us, help us, and enable us to do what is right and proper, but he also allows his miracles and his works to work through us. And also sends individuals who come and correct us and guide us, including the hierarchs of the church, where when they're haired, their crozier, their pateritza, their staff, they're told to direct it and use it to guide and to lead, but also to sometimes admonish and use it firmly. And these three men came and did that. One example is how Basil, you know, had to not just lead and fight what was happening in the world, which we see happens even today, where people are hungry and in need and they're being neglected by the government, by the wealthy, by businesses. At one point, the businesses were holding the grains and stuff so the value would go up and weren't feeding people, weren't even allowed to be sold, so the values would increase and they'd have to, they could demand more money. And Basil was fighting against that. But also, with not just fighting outside pe people that were outside the church, or people who didn't follow truly Christ's call and truly the church's teaching, he wasn't just fighting those type of individuals, he was fighting individuals from within. These saints were fighting people from within the church. Bishops who were teaching, and priests, clergy, and laity who were teaching heresy, Arianism, and other heresies. And these saints had to correct not just people from without uh, the church, that were outside the church, but correct people inside the church. And that's a really an uphill battle. But God's will surpasses these things. And these men taught the true faith in defense of the Trinity and the proper teaching of the Trinity and the proper understanding of who Christ was and what he was for the world. And that has to be an example for all of you. Because you can't say that these goals set by all these saints throughout history, just lofty and unattainable. Or most of all, what God expects from us is unattainable, or we can't do it. Because, yes, in this world, you're being mocked for being a true Christian and truly following your faith. In many ways, you're considered an outsider. In many ways, you're being made fun of and sometimes excluded. 
excluded from parties, excluded from social gatherings. Oh, forget him. He, he says crazy things, or he's, re, he's a religious fanatic. A regular Christian striving to be holy and trying to do God's will and call. In many cultures, or many now the way the world has been working, you're considered a fanatic. Just from trying to do logical, discerning, intelligent, and wise things. And the sane are now being called crazy. And craziness is now being called sane. And these men set that example. And many men and women throughout the history of the church have set that example. So you are held to that standard. And you can fit that standard. Each and every one of you this isn't just lofty things or things we're just teaching in classrooms or things that I'm spouting out in the church or that you hear priests in the, in the Orthodox Church talk about. Defending truth, defending faith, not just defending lofty theological principles, lofty ideals, philosophical ideas or concepts, but realities. Reality of who God is, the way the world works, the way we're supposed to live lives of sanctity, of cleanliness, of goodness. These aren't just lofty or fake things that we're just spouting out to you, expecting you as teenagers and young adults to be able to do. These are lessons and values and standards that you must set for yourselves of excellence and set for life. And if these men and women throughout history and these three hierarchs could go against the grain and go against even other hierarchs and against society in many instances at the threat of death, poverty, suffering, starving, then you can. And if we stand united as a faith and as a church, we stand united with God's power and grace. Our actions, our works have to reflect our faith. We, through these actions, like Basil, like John Chrysostom, like Gregory, and like so many saints after them and before them, we have to act our faith in this darkness, in this world. So therefore, we become light. We become a flickering light, a moving light, a light that also becomes contagious and spreads. Each and every one of you can accomplish that. And by participating in the sacramental life of the church, reading the faith, reading the lives of these fathers and mothers of the church, listening to what they're teaching us, you become stronger, you become enlightened, and you can accomplish it. A lot of craziness is going on now and has gone on throughout history. It's not just now. We're more aware of it now. And people who are pushing evil and negative agendas are now using social media and the internet and TV to push their agenda, where they didn't have that platform before. And then you have certain Protestant groups and televangelists and all these false teachers. In many instances, you, read, you hear them on YouTube and online and stuff. They even think they know about orthodoxy now. They have no clue. And they make false judgments and misinterpretations of what we teach. Now they're pushing their agenda. So you have the craziness on the left and the craziness on the right pushing false agendas, heresies, things that are not logical, that are insane in many instances. Where are we at now? Are we standing by our faith or are we just falling to peer pressure? Are we just falling to societal new standards that they're setting? You, each and every one, you have to make that decision. Is it Christ who you will follow, or is it false teachings and heresies? And I don't just mean theological ones. I don't just mean the cults of Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses and Scientologists, which are extreme cults and are evil. I don't just mean that. I mean people who are Protestant and people who are outside the Orthodox faith who say heresies. Oh, but they're, they're Christian. Oh, but they, they believe in Jesus. Do they? 
Because these fathers, even back then, had to defend who Christ was against heretics. And against monophysites and against other false teachings that were arising. Because to truly follow God and truly follow Christ is to know him and know who he is. That he's fully divine and human, the fully divine and fully human. To know these things is to know how we can follow them and truly follow them against these heresies and against these false teachings, which these three men set an example for us. And to truly know him is to be able to speak the true message of the gospel. Christ is the gospel. And to know and go out in the world and do this. You're each and every one of you are called to that. And you know what's going on because you all watch TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and all these social media platforms. And it's not just these people talking religion. They're not talking about Jesus or theological things or things of the Bible. They'll talk about social issues, they call them, where they promote the death of infant babies in a mother's womb. Oh, it's a woman's choice of her body. What about that life in her? That gift from God, the gift from nature. Oh, it's just disposable. And they don't want to talk about the science now because it's no longer a ball of cells. We know better than 40 years ago and 50 years ago scientifically and in medicine. And I know in medicine and dealing with all the doctors that over 95% of them are against abortion or don't want to do an abortion because when we see how it's done and what it does, no one wants to do it because they know it's evil. And about the now pushing young people to question if they're male or female even in the school system and in media. And it's just okay if you're a man to chop off your organ and now you're a woman. Forget about that you were created with these cells. Forget about that you were created as a man. Or forget that you were created as a woman. We're going to confuse that up and throw that away. And not just throw away God's law, but throw natural law away. Because they want to defend a point or push an agenda. You and each and one of, every one of you is going to be called to stand up and attest to your faith. And to say that a lot of these things are wrong. Do you have the strength? Do you have the integrity? Do you have the principles to truly say, I am a true Christian. I truly follow Christ and I know the faith and I know who Christ is. And I'm learning from these fathers and mothers of the church, these great teachers, to do and follow their example. That's up to each and every one of you. The clergy and the church can only guide you. It can only call you to truth and true peace and true joy and true happiness. Not these fake fixes that drugs and being popular and having great things can provide. But true joy and true happiness and truly living in Christ, that's up to each and every one of you. And you're called to that. And God is there for you. Our Lord is there with open arms. The Virgin Mary, the Theotokos, is there for you. The saints are there for you. St. Basil the Great, St. John Chrysostom, and St. Gregory are there for you. And all these other saints, and the angelic powers, and the truth is there. The true light is there for you. It's your choice now to be enveloped in it as young adults to go out in the world and do it and to follow these great teachers' example. You're called to it. You can do it. You can accomplish it. You have within it, you have, what's, you have what's right and just in you. You have that strength in you. You have that light in you. It's your call to let it shine. You're called to do this. And you're called to glorify God and to uplift each other and to encourage each other to do the same and everyone out in the world. But it's your choice. Look to the light and to the truth. And in that, you will find true salvation. To our Lord be the glory forever. Amen.